Hi there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Chris. I hope you're doing great. In the past, I've been asked, is the Ricoh GR3 good? Is it as good as the Fuji X100V? Um, which one is best? I know it, it might seem weird for some of you, maybe, but I decided to, hey, why not make the comparison video? And here it is. First point, overall size and portability. So between these two cameras is a bit of a no-brainer. The Ricoh is really, really portable and small. I mean, check this out. I can really hold it without a problem in my hand. I have small hands and it literally I can close and touch. Check this out. All right. If you look at the Fuji, not the same deal. <laughs> it is a bit bigger, uh, so it's not as portable. And I will give the point to the Ricoh. Overall user experience and really the feeling. What is the feeling as you're shooting with these cameras? Because one thing is to make the photo, one thing is to be behind the camera as you're making the photo and have a, a, a feeling, um, you know, how, how you feel when you're taking the photos. The thing with Fuji is that you have an EVF, OVF, like so, that is really cool because while this one has an amazing screen, the problem is that you're still looking at an LCD screen. So it really is a step up, I feel like, from the cell phone uh, and, and in between an iPhone and this camera. So in terms of user experience with all the little dials, um, you know, the retro look and feel, uh, the aperture ring, all that, I will give the point to Fuji. It would be totally unfair not to mention street photography. I know this is an everyday life usage video, but the Ricoh GR3, uh, this is by the way the street version, uh, is known for its capabilities on the street and the fact that it really has the, the form factor and the, the options to just make it a great camera overall for street. I mean, <laughs> I thought the X100V was amazing for street, and don't get me wrong, it is amazing for street photography. Any camera can be amazing for street photography, but this guy here is so small and portable, I mean, it's hard to beat. In fact, I went on the street with this guy here, and I had it in my hand like so, and I just went to take a photo of someone. It was an old lady, she did not notice that I was there, she didn't see anything, and I could just go and take my photos without a problem. Uh, yeah, I have to give the point to the Ricoh GR3. Which one looks better? Well, that's uh, subject to each and everyone's opinion, but in my opinion, I mean, Fuji has, once again, the looks. I mean, th this thing is... Uh, I can't... I mean, you fall in love with this. The way it looks when you have it around your neck, when you're taking a photo, it really reminds you of those old school rangefinder cameras, um, those old, just just old cameras. And the Ricoh doesn't. <laughs> Plainly said, the Ricoh does not remind you of anything. It's just a, a very small point and shoot looking camera, uh, which really fits anywhere. But the looks of this one, uh, I mean, it's Fuji guys. So I'm gonna give the point to Fuji. Let's now talk about image quality and sensor. The sensors of both these cameras are APS-C sensors. So you're gonna get very similar results with the two. This one has 26 megapixels and the Ricoh has 24 megapixels. Unless you are running and hunting and chasing megapixels, uh, those two megapixel difference will not change anything <laughs> in your photos. Now that being said, Fuji has one edge that Ricoh doesn't have and that is the film simulations. You have all the beautiful film simulations of Fujifilm in the X100V. I mean, Fujifilm is known for their film stock back in the day and that's something that they beautifully incorporated into their lineup of cameras um, and this one is no exception. So I will give the point to Fuji. Let's talk about versatility. Which one is more versatile? And what I mean by versatile is the ability to change from the base model, which is this, to something more. And while the Ricoh is great as it is, you can't do much other than a hot shoe mount here to possibly potentially put a trigger or a flash, but that's about it. I don't see anything else you could do with this little camera. The X100V, on the other hand, well, you could put a bunch of things like a shutter button, for example, right here. You could put a lens hood. You could uh, put a wide or teleconverter to have a different focal length. Uh, you could put a little grip under here. You can put a thumb rest. I mean, you, you can do a lot of things with this little camera to make it do more than it's supposed to do as it's 
you know, basic model. Obviously, you have to pay for all those things, so it's extra money that you would spend, but you can do that. So the point for this goes to Fuji. Let's now talk about stabilization IBIS. Fuji does not have IBIS, so that's out of the way. And the Ricoh GR3 does. Why is it so cool to have IBIS? Well, basically because it will compensate for shakiness uh, when you're taking photos, for example, in low light or in some scenarios where your shutter uh, speed is slower. And that's always a great plus to have in such a small body. So the point goes to Rico. Next up is the ND filter. Both of these cameras have an ND filter built in. That is great news because when there's a lot of light out there, you might want to reduce a little bit the light that comes through your lens so that you can have a wider aperture, for example. Or you could do long exposure. Why not? Now, the Fuji has four stop of ND and the strength of the Ricoh GR3 is two stops. I don't think this is something to penalize on either uh, cases because when you don't need to have four stops of uh, ND strength, uh, you either take it or you don't. And that's the case for Fuji. And having two stops can be enough in most case scenarios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a point to both. Let's now talk about the lens of these cameras and the focal length. The Fuji X100V has a 23mm, which is a 35mm equivalent for full frame, and the Ricoh GR3 has an 18.3mm, which is an equivalent of roughly 28mm on full frame, which is, by the way, what the Leica Q2 has. Personally, I prefer the 23mm, which is to me, a better focal length for everyday use for street photography. But the 28 mil is not bad because it is a little wider. You can get a little more in your frame if you want to do shots that are a little bit wider. Or if you just simply want to get closer to your subject, it can be really interesting, give a good perspective. Now, if you buy the wide angle converter for the Fuji X100V, uh, which is optional, you can get a 28 mil equivalent for full frame, so an 18.3. So basically, you can get the same with the Fuji than you would get with the Ricoh. The other big plus is that the Fuji has an extra stop of aperture. You can open all the way to f2 versus f2.8 on the Ricoh. So for this one, the point goes to Fuji. And what about weather sealing? Well, the Ricoh GR3 does not have any weather sealing, which is a pity because this is a street photography geared camera. Um, it is made to go out there and shoot. And if it's a little humid, wet, dusty. Uh, I think it's a great thing to have so that all that those elements don't go into your sensor. On the other hand, the Fuji X100V is 90% weather sealed, which basically means it is weather sealed. So if you go out to shoot, you shouldn't have any trouble or any problem with the fact that it's humid, it is wet, it is dusty. So the point goes to Fuji. Let's now talk about one of the most, if not the most important point, and that is the price, because that will or can at least determine which one you're going to buy. The Ricoh GR3 costs roughly $950 right now, and the Fuji X100V is around $1,400. So we do get a steep increase of price between these two. In fact, the Fuji costs a third more than the Ricoh almost. That is a lot. That's a big difference between these two. And I feel like they're not really in the same category, uh, but they kind of are at the same time because you can kind of do the same things with one and the other. So it's kind of unfair to give a point to one or the other because you get maybe more with one and less with the other, but I'm going to give the point to the Rico. So my conclusion is that these are amazing cameras in their own way, their own fields. And for everyday use, both of them are great. They, they can both fit. If you're a little more creative and you like those extra dials, that extra creativity, uh, the looks of the JPEGs that come out of the Fuji camera, and you're not someone that likes to spend a lot of time on the computer, I think Fuji is a little better. And that is probably why there are seven points for the Fuji X1V and five for the Ricoh. But once again, this is my humble opinion, having used these two cameras and what I think. But what do you think? Do you own any of these cameras? Do you like them? What are your views about it? Write it down in the comment section below. Write down as well if you have any questions, which I'm going to answer as fast as possible. And well, take care, and i see you in my next video. Cheers.